Hello and welcome to the Saturday Wrap for the first full week of January 2022. Saturday the 8th of Jan. It's the morning, it's raining and it's a look back on all the things that I can remember that have happened this week. To be honest, it feels like I've been in lockdown, haven't really gone out. Um, things are like cold, wet, uh, transport issues, emergency timetable on emergency timetable, and then trains get cancelled on the trains, buses that don't turn up. Um, not that I haven't gone to pubs, but, uh, you know, frictionless. Anyway, so Saturday wrap for the 8th of January 2022. A look back on things that happened, mostly. Anyway, um, let's start off with the word or the phrase of the week. Lots of choice here. Certain football stadiums. But do you remember tsunami? A tsunami of cases. Well, now here in Wales, we're in the eye of the storm. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if that's science or not. I could very well be wrong. And there was a speech um, either on the Saturday the 1st or the Sunday the 2nd from Eric Honecker about the year ahead. Yeah, it was full of doom and gloom. But don't worry, because here in Wales we do things differently without any scientific evidence being released. We're still number one on case rate rising. Hmm. That is science. Anyway, um, app of the week. Uh, okay, so you know what I think about subscription services. Don't like them. I do have some. Here are two. The first is Screencasts Online. Um, it's a website, it's an app, two weekly reviews of apps, which are reviews and tutorials. Um, and it's mainly for Mac apps or an iOS apps and such like. But nowadays, lots of things cross platform. And Alison Sheridan, her of the Nozilla cast, which is Alison Backwards, did a review of Parallels Toolbox. 40 utilities in one app, um, uh, one subscription per machine, Mac and Windows. And I didn't realize, um, this is my fault, update comes up, you just install the update and then you go. They have a thing called launch. Quite often I want to launch more than one program at a time. Usually when I start up like the browser and Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp and if it's on the Mac, add to that Apple Notes. There's a thing in there called Launch, which does it a treat and you can have keyboard shortcuts, Control, Shift and 1 and they're all launched. Okay, it might not seem like the end of the world, but I'm paying for it and I'm getting it and it's really good and I should have spotted it. So that's Parallels Toolbox. Um, and the thing of the week is also an app, but I haven't got it. But I see it all over Twitter. Um, three little coloured squares, Wordle. Yeah, it's a bit like Words with Friends, except I don't think you have friends involved in it because I haven't downloaded it, but it was nothing when it was released in November and now it is huge. I like things like that where they just appear out of nowhere and yeah, it's good. It's very good. Anyway, um, so what was the week like? Um, as I said, started off mild um, and wet and then it went downhill and got cold and uh, frosty and then icy and there was hail. And there's a bit of sleet and there was snow yesterday and it's bleak winter. Which is what you get in January, which is why it is one of my most least favourite months. Along with February, which I don't like either. Unless it's an emergency heat wave, which is unlikely to be, to be perfectly honest. Anyway, on Sunday... Um, Backing up my machines, updating my machines, my Chromebook. There was an update for that and a big message. End of life, June 2022. 
which means not that it won't work but no more updates and the big thing is no more security updates which is a shame i like my chromebook basically the chrome browser in a laptop bit low end but you can run well you can run linux apps on it and you can run android apps on it if i have the money i will definitely replace it i have a liking for the chrome well boxes and box to be perfectly honest they are good mm, what have we got next yeah i usually take well the previous week of this week off uh, for ces which was the consumer electronics show and has now become ces usually where all the large it manufacturers get together and announce either what they've got that is new or what they're planning to have as new quite often it's vaped away uh, we'll announce it now and if you're lucky you might get it in september I used to take the week off and then monitoring it. There would be tons of podcasts about it. But this year, well, just before Christmas, people started pulling out Omicron, of course, and then more people pulled out. And it was already half virtual, and now it is particularly virtual. And to be honest, it's like laptop manufacturers. Intel did a couple of announcements. Um, TV manufacturers... BMW, a car that's paintwork changes colour. Only white to grey to black. And that hasn't been given a release date, I don't think. But, hmm. Anyway, I'm off next week. MB01. And I'll catch up with it then. But, as with more things in life, it's not what it used to be. Although on Monday, I came up on the lottery, um, made for life. You know that £10,000 a month for the rest of your life? I won a tenner, just a one-off, which I will let ride. Yeah. <laughs> Still, it is much better than nothing. And I'll put it in next week, and uh, sorry, next month, and I probably won't win anything off it, which is a shame. But... You know, every so often, you do get happy. Ooh. Beer of the week. Abstract Lens, North Brewing Co. 8% alcohol by volume. Juicy, tropical, fruity, strong. A little bit of pepperiness in there. Nice mouthfeel, B++. Got it from Tesco's before Christmas. Really good. And a unique for my untapped scores as well oh yeah murky <laughs> um monday night boiler didn't come on i thought it was just because the thermostat was already up to temperature because my bedroom's quite warm tuesday night also so batteries out of the thermostat put them back in no change turn it on manually via the app no change Long story short, TLDR, turned the boiler off, turned it back on. It came back on as per schedule. It's worked fine since then. Nine times out of ten, power it down, power it back up. Or oh, as we say in the trade, power cycle it. It's never gone wrong before, which is a bit of a worry. Still, it's under a maintenance contract. And I just think possibly the software just... Had a memory leak, maybe. And powering it off and powering it back on cleared that. I don't know. But this is the time of the year where you don't want your boiler doing that sort of thing. No heating, no hot water. Exactly. Right. Um, email from Tesco's insurance. Got my car insurance with them. This year, they have to tell you what your previous renewal was. It was a 50 quid. Hmm, okay, so I do much fewer miles per year due to the pandemic. So um, I got another quote, Liverpool Victoria via Boundless, 8% off, went all through the whole thing, went to get the quote, it couldn't do it. Luckily, I was able to save it 40 quid cheaper. 
I'm going to get back in touch with Tesco, tell them the quote, say, can you match it? If they can't, I will cancel. Yeah. Problem is, a lot of these nowadays, especially Tesco, auto renewal. That's how they catch you. Never, ever, ever take the quote that they send you. It's the sucker thing to do. That's how they make their money, uh, rather than provide the service, of course. Hmm. Still hellishly expensive. I'm an old man, you know. I'm a civil servant. I'm a low risk. It's people hitting me is the problem, to be perfectly honest. Um, the beer thing of the week. Apparently, terms like bitter and mild are now seen as old-fashioned. Especially in America. Um, so the term pub ale has been brought in for bitters. I can't imagine going into a pub and asking for a pub ale, although there are some British brewers that already have it, and I had it for quite some time. Yeah, I prefer to say pint of bitter. Actually, no, I point because I am a discerning person. I am keeping my untapped scores up. And actually, what is the difference between bitter and best bitter apart from cost? Usually a little bit of strength. I could be wrong. Anyway, um, oh, back to life in Wales with Eric Honecker. The WRU, the Home Internationals, February. No one, no one can go on a stand. Um, you can have up to 50 on the halfway line if you're a small club. Um, but the National Stadium, no, not the National Stadium, it's the Principality Stadium, 70,000. And you can't just turn that thing on straight away. So the Welsh Rugby Union are looking at playing the match in Tottenham Hotspur's ground. That didn't please Mr. Honecker and deluded Morgan. Well, they would have to look at their support of the WRU in future if that was the case. Yeah. Very nice of you. Um, I don't know where you get your money from. Uh, oh, yeah, taxpayers. It's not your money. I would be quite pleased if they actually went uh, to Tottenham Hotspur. Cardiff City, at home. Can't watch them. Away, you can go and watch them. Yeah, Mr. Honecker, you've done a really good job. And while I'm talking about that, in North Wales, actually, in England, in Chester... Chester City Football Club, the border, well, the car park's in England, but the actual stadium is in Wales. And they've had two matches since the new rules have come in on Boxing Day. North Wales Police have been involved as well. Big question, and this was on, I think it was on Wales Online. Where do they pay their business rates to? I wonder if they... Chester Football Club plays their business race to Chester. Uh, if the ground is in Wales, should they be paying them somewhere else? Why are the peace police getting involved? How many cases has this caused? Where's the science? Here in Wales, we're really petty. We really are. Why would anyone want to come here? Also the weather. Okay, so MBO1 this week coming actually tomorrow um last time i went there i kicked the wall going to the toilet in the dark um badly bros toe this week planning on gloucester again going to the tumble in went over on my ankle same foot damaged feet seem to be the thing that associated with gloucester for me Mm, bad things happen in three. I'm not looking forward to the third one, to be perfectly honest. Um, and lastly, here Eric Honecker. Weekly updates. What did he announce? Absolutely nothing apart from Eye of the Storm. Things are going to get worse. Here in Wales, um, politics. Uh, had a go at Mr. Johnson, whose case rate is... Well, it's not increasing as, mu as much as in Wales, so, uh, you know. <sighs> That's it. Thank you very much. Um, 
Ooh, screen's gone dark. Oh, there you are. And you're back. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much. Comments in the usual places as per normal. And um, probably the next one of these in a week's time. But tomorrow, Prelude for MBO1. I think the rain's going to stop. I hope it's going to stop. Bye-bye. <laughs>